All right, folks, as promised, we are going to continue on with our MLA formatting and style instruction. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about quotes. So um, I will admit some of this will be repetitive. I do that on purpose. I just want to make sure that the, the foundation is created. And let's talk first about short quotations. So a short quotation is fewer than four typed lines. So if your quote is a half a line, a line and a half, anything shorter than four typed lines, you use quotation marks, double quotation marks, give the author and the page where you found the reference. Okay, if you don't have a page number, that's okay. Sometimes it's not paginated, especially if you get something online, then you're gonna use the author's last name. And of course, then you also need to include your reference on the works cited page, which will correlate to the in-text citation for that quote. Punctuation marks like periods, commas, semicolons should appear after the parenthetical citation. So again, I showed you this before where you want to make sure that the quotation marks, then the parenthetical citation, then the ending punctuation. Okay. If there is a question mark or an exclamation point in the quote, they have to go inside of the quotation marks, but they go after the parentheses if they're a part of your text. And we're going to see an example of that in just a moment. Okay, so here are some examples of quotes. According to some, dreams express profound aspects of personality, through, though others disagree. So you'll see the quoted text, and then you'll see um, the parenthetical citation immediately following the quotes. So it's quotes, parenthetical citation, a comma outside of the parenthetical citation, and then the rest of your words with the ending punctuation there. Here's a different example. According to Folks's study, dreams may express, quote, profound aspects of personality, end quote, page number only because we've identified the author here, and then ending punctuation. And then finally, another example, is it possible that dreams may express, quote, profound aspects of personality, end quote, then the citation, then the question mark, because in this case, the question mark is part of your text, right? It's not part of the quote. If it were part of the quote, it would go inside of the quotation marks. Hopefully that makes sense. And if it doesn't, please feel free to ask me if you have any questions about this process. Okay, let's take a look at a works cited page. I want to mention to you, I'm only going over short quotations because there really should not be a paper that you're doing for this class that is longer than four lines. You're not going to be doing a long enough essay or a long enough research paper to warrant an extended quote. If you do decide to incorporate an extended quote for some reason, please let me know and we can go over the process. Of course, it's also reviewed in your book and the Purdue OWL but I would like to caution you against it. You want fewer quotes and you want shorter quotes, uh, especially for this class. You may at some point in your academic career go into lengthier quotes, but even as a doctoral student, I am told to minimize my use of quotations in my writing. The writing should be yours, supported by the research. All right, so this is a works cited page example. I want to point out that the entire thing is double spaced, just like I said from the very beginning, every single thing in your paper will be double spaced. You have a title at the top, Works Cited. This title, of course, is capitalized like a book would be capitalized. The first letter of each word is capitalized, so capital W, capital C. Notice that it's alphabetized. B C, E, G, 
So it goes in alphabetical order down the list. Notice too that it doesn't matter if you're using a title or if you're using an author's name, okay? It's still alphabetical order. You'll notice too that here's an example of a title that doesn't have an author. And this is what that citation looks like. In this case, they include the URL, which is the website address. I do not require you to do that as long as you give me sufficient information to find that information myself. So if you have a title of an article and where the article came from and who published it, I should be able to locate that pretty easily. If you are missing quite a bit of information, then you will want to include the URL. Okay, now I don't need you to memorize exactly what the citation looks like. There are resources available to help you create citations. Um, I will offer those to you in the text of the lesson with links. And I would also like to remind you that the Purdue OWL is a resource that I use to create this PowerPoint presentation. And all of the information that I used is available through that website and can help you further as well. If you have any questions about any part of this presentation that I've done for you, or anything about citing sources that you're confused about, please do let me know. I am here to help. I hope that this presentation, while short, gave you a glimpse into what a quote might look like and what a works cited page should look like. I'm gonna leave this here for you to take a look at one more time. You'll notice the red underlines, that's because that's Microsoft telling me that those are not normal words, which we already know. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, and again, if you have any questions, please let me know and, and I can work with you one-on-one. -on -one. We can meet in a Zoom. I uh, hope you guys are doing well and have a great day.